Welcome to Molar Mass. In this lesson, we're going to look at why it's a good thing for us to use moles to count particles, or to represent large numbers of particles. So why do we use moles? Well, the mass of one mole of any substance is equal to the molecular mass of that substance in grams. Now this is a very powerful idea. Let's look at water, H2O. If I look at one molecule of H2O, I can find the molecular mass. So I have hydrogen, I have oxygen. If I want to find the molecular mass, it's a fairly straightforward endeavor. I have two hydrogens, I have one oxygen. I know that hydrogen weighs one AMU. I know that oxygen weighs 16 AMUs. I can now multiply these out and add them up. And this is going to tell me that my molecular mass, the mass of one molecule, so one molecule, is 18 AMUs. If I now look at one mole of water, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water, according to this relationship, the mass is 18 grams. It matches perfectly the molecular mass, the mass of one molecule, just it's in grams now, which is a quantity we can actually measure in a lab. We call this the molar mass. It's different from the molecular mass because the molecular mass is the mass of one molecule and is written in units that correspond with that, AMUs. The molar mass is the mass of a single mole and we typically represent it like this, 18 grams per mole. And we call that the molar mass. Okay, this unit is important to remember grams per mole, and that's the molar mass. It tells us the mass of the substance in grams for every mole of that substance. Because the way we find it is so similar to the molecular mass or the formula mass, this is sometimes also called, instead of molar mass, this can sometimes be referred to as a gram formula mass. Let's look at another example and we'll specifically look at calculating the molar mass. Here we have carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide is made up of carbon and oxygen. We know that carbon is 12 AMUs from the periodic table and that oxygen is 16 AMUs. According to the formula, there's only one carbon and there are two oxygens. So I'm going to multiply these through and get 12 and 32. Then I'm going to add these up to get the molecular mass, which is the mass of one molecule. Based on what we just talked about, that means that carbon dioxide also has a molar mass of 44 grams per mole. So even though it's useful to represent the number of particles with moles, because it makes it into a much more usable number, it's also useful to be able to represent this by mass, because mass is a quantity we can actually measure in a lab. So we can use the molar mass of a substance to help us translate or convert moles into grams. Let's take a look at examples of us doing just that, converting between moles and mass, and mass and moles. The first question asks, what is the mass of three moles of carbon dioxide? Well, from before, I found that the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44 grams per mole. This question asks what three moles weighs. Well, if I think this through logically, if I have 44 grams per mole, let's look at that, I have, here's one mole, okay, that's going to be 44 grams. If I have three moles, so there's another one, there's another one, each one of these is going to be 44 grams. So that's what 44 grams per mole really means. So this is one way of just thinking about it. I could just multiply this by three. Alternatively, I could use dimensional analysis on this number here. I want to convert three moles. I want to change that into grams. And I know grams per mole because it comes right from this number here. There's 44 grams per one mole. So the moles cancel, and I'm left with grams as my unit. I have 3 times 44, which gives me 132 grams of carbon dioxide. You cannot leave out grams of carbon dioxide. That is the unit. So you'd have to have this for a full and complete answer. 
Let's look at the second question. How many moles of oxygen gas are in a 100 gram sample of oxygen gas? The first thing we have to do is figure out the molar mass of O2. Well, oxygen is 16, and there are clearly two of them in this molecule, so that's going to give me 32 grams per mole. If I set up the dimensional analysis again, I'm going to start with this 100 grams, so I have 100 grams as a quantity given to me in the problem, and I want to change that into moles. So I have to have moles on top and grams on the bottom of this fraction. Now there's 32 grams per one mole, so one mole, and I put 32 down here. The relationship is 32 grams to one mole. So I can do this out, the grams are going to drop out here. I'm going to have 100 times 1 divided by 32 because it's on the bottom. And that's going to give me 3.125 moles of O2. You may also see this abbreviated as 3.125 moles written like this. Now don't ask me why it's worth dropping the one E, but that's the convention for abbreviating moles. A mole becomes MOL, and MOLES becomes MOLS. Remember to write in the substance name next to moles because moles by itself is not a unit. That wraps up our lesson on molar mass. Any questions you have, write them down in your notes and bring them with you to class.